Hi everyone, I am Diego Silva from Santiago, Chile. I'm the Strategy and Contracts Management Manager of the DGPM, the Bus Regulator Institution of the City, part of the Middle Structure of Chile. And today we will talk about electromobility in Santiago and how Chile has been the leader in this area the last years. First of all, I would like to introduce you our city and Santiago has a 680 square kilometers coverage area with 7 million people living here. 18.5 million trips are made every day. We have six bus operators plus metro and urban rails with 2.5 million public, tra public transport users. We have every day 4.6 million public transport trips. Our average speed is 20 km per hour. Now, talking about the feature of the system, we have 6,700 buses in 380 bus routes. We have over 11,000 bus stops with over 26,000 people working at the system. We have 142 kilometers of metro, 315 kilometers of exclusive and segregated bus lanes. We have GPS in, in our buses and also fleet management. Our freight collection is, that, is done with, the, with our smart card called BIP, with integrated fare with the metro and the metro train. And the metro train is, is, a, is a suburban rail. Now, talking about, talking about our electric buses, first of all, our current fleet. Now, we have 776 electric buses as part of the provision contract scheme. A new partnership was created among, the, among bus operators and electric companies. These electric companies look for the financing, electric, electricity management, and charging infrastructure. This partnership are Utah with NG with 100 buses, BYD with 403 and 400, sorry, 435 buses with NLX. We have also Photon with 215 buses, a partnership with Kaufman and Copec Voltex. And finally, we have Kingland buses, 25 buses with Neot Capital. The other scheme which is incorporating new buses is the current transferring process. This entry process creates a new contracts model with a new contracts member, the flight provider, the fleet, the fleet provider, sorry. The fleet provider delivers plan, supervises, and, super, and certifies maintenance. Then, in this scheme, we have the bus operators and fleet provider, with both with a established contract with the ministry. The new model is currently being analyzed in order to continue with the following tendering processes. We put an incentive in order to attract more electric buses. The tendering would receive a longer contract if over 50% 50 of the fleet of their bid was electric. It's important to mention how we attracted this new actor for the current tendering process. There was a state vision of this new tendering process. This is a key element to be considered. There was a support, a very high support, and a vision from every part of, the, of an institution of the Chilean government to this new process. There was a direct coordination from the embassies in different countries and also from the Marca Chile institution organizing workshops and workshops with financiers and manufacturers. In this way, the tender results were that 56% of the new buses were electric. Could have been even higher, but articulated electric buses were not considered. This is a good situation considering the current high prices of the oil. And also, new partnership bus operating infrastructure charging were created. Now, let's talk about the lesson learned with all these processes. A key point is the electricity liability in bus depots area, and that is something essential to be considered. The fleet side volumes allows a better position in financial terms for the success of the tendering process. Also, it's important to remember that the new tendering model, bus operator and fleet provider, is being assessed for the future processes of tendering. 
it is, ne and it is necessary and compulsory uh, an interaction and coordination among key actors and stakeholders to achieve success. We are clear of the high communica communicational impact of the electric buses. They are highly rated by their users. Another, another important point to be considered is that at the moment when you analyze the in where these buses, electric buses are going to operate is that the bus autonomy is definitely based on the bus road features particularly of course if the route is flat or not but also how many bus stops and how much of of the bus road is operating in highways the battery duration and reliability of obviously need more years to be analyzed properly Particularly talking about the charging infrastructure, we have the vision, no electricity, no operation, no electric buses. So, all the necessary must be coordinated in order to have enough electricity in order to have the bus, the electric buses. As I have been talking, there is a compulsory coordination among all the actors. With, with no, if this coordination does not exist, no, it is going to be very hard to obtain a, a success in this model. In this way, the charging infrastructure is provided by the partner chosen by the fast operator. Could be NG, NLX, or could be in Copec Voltex. We have currently three options actually, and this institution coordinates all the, the measures and works needed to implement in the this in the electricity in the bus depots. Obviously, all these actions are supervised by us, the DTPM, the bus regulator of the system. Finally, it's important to mention that the electricity distribution coordinated by the electricity regulator, the SEC in Spanish, are aware to provide and coordinate the availability of the electricity. I hope this presentation has allowed you to know more details on how we have our electric fit. Muchas gracias and thank you. For, please feel free to contact me.